up, dancers. I hope you're ready for a short, sweet, but very potent core workout. This core workout is going to especially benefit dancers who use an apparatus. So whether you're an aerialist, lira, pole, anything where you are having to invert yourself onto your apparatus is going to be very, very helpful. Having a strong invert comes down to having really strong core and really strong hip flexors. And we need the hip flexors and core to play nice together in the sandbox, meaning we really need to get the core online and strong so that all of that leg lift power isn't just being left to your hip flexors. Because a lot of times it's easy to just rely on our psoas, our quadratus, um, our sartorius, and these hip flexor muscles and our core can kind of be eh, a little bit switched off, which can lead to a lot of tightness and pain and achiness in your hip flexors. It can also lead to back pain if we're not being able to support and control what's happening in our low back when we are lifting up and especially lowering down out of an invert. So there's a couple key things that I really want you to pay attention to alignment wise that unless you're doing these things, you're not going to get the benefit of this workout. So it is about quality over quantity every time. So one first thing I want you to be aware of is that you are not letting your belly puff out. A lot of times I see dancers with this habit where their stomach basically pushes like out like this when they activate, they'll go like, ugh, pushing out, pushing out. When what you need to be doing is actually pulling in, in, right? Because when we're pushing out, we aren't using our transverse abs and instead it's just your, your six pack abs that are getting the work there. Um, and that means that your hip flexors are gonna be doing a lot more of the work. So we're really trying to get your deeper layers of your transverse abs online here. So you want to be using the breath. When you exhale is when you want to really get that engagement, that, that powerful moment where you need the most strength to be drawing everything in towards the midline. Now, there's a difference between activating and drawing in and sucking in. We're not trying to do a like suck in kind of situation. It's more of a exhale and contract, right? So I'm not at any point going to be like sticking my ribs out. It's this internal like hugging in towards your spine and drawing everything in. Like you're trying to cinch like the waist of a corset. Yeah. All the way from your rib cage down even into below your belly button, that internal drawing in. That's how we're going to make sure that we are using our deeper stabilizers like our transverse abs to activate so that it's not all up to our hip flexors to have to move the leg and try and stabilize the spine. Okay. Um, so first two things are using the breath, using that exhale to coordinate with when you're engaging the most. I like to think about using the exhale when I would be inverting. So when I am lifting those legs up, is when I want to use that <sighs> exhale power. So it's really important that we learn to use our breath with our core engagement because a lot of dancers struggle with like holding their breath and not breathing when doing inverts or choppers or any kind of like spin pass I've noticed. And a lot of times that is because our deeper core isn't activating and our diaphragm, which is our main respiratory muscle, is having to brace to try and help us stabilize. And we don't want our diaphragm to be working as a stabilizer muscle. We want it to just be able to work as a breathing muscle and get our actual core online. So the other thing I want you to really be aware of is that you are keeping your low back on the floor. Now there's gonna be an exercise here where we are going to be intentionally propped up, so don't worry about it there. But in all of our exercises where we are on our back, I want you to make sure that this doesn't happen. You see how I move my legs and then my back kind of arches. We want to make sure that we are anchoring the spine down and working that core to keep our low back stable as we move the hip flexors and the legs. 
If our back is going and moving around, your core is not engaging properly and you're training really bad habits. You wanna make sure that you are only going as low with the legs. You know, on something like a leg lower as you can keep your low back on the ground. The second you start to feel that like tilt happen or you start to feel your back coming off, you need to regress and be like, okay, I'm not gonna go any further than that and really work on maintaining that alignment. So the second you do this, your core is shut off, your strain in your spine, so you want to just think anchoring your back to the ground, okay? So, with those in mind, come on down to your back and you do a little rock side to side here. <sighs> Taking a few deep breaths, let's hug that right knee in, give it a little rock here. And switching sides, left leg hugs in. Beautiful, okay, we are going to start with just some basic leg lowers. So inhaling on the way down, rounding that low back, pressing it into the floor. Exhale, so we really need to use that anchoring breath to pull in. So we are not just Whacking the legs back and forth. We're trying to not use momentum here. Keeping the upper body relaxed, shoulders, jaw, neck. As relaxed as possible, trying to have all the tension in the core. Inhaling down. Exhaling up. All right, that's 20, 19, 18, 17, so only going as low as you can keep the form. You know, if you feel like your belly starts to puff out or your low back comes off the ground, just stop. Even if you're just coming down halfway. Form is the most important. 14. Trying to let the upper body, the arms and shoulders relax and not be gripping the ground. We really want to think about the core is the one working here. 12, and you can even put your hands on your belly to feel that it's not puffing up. Get that tactile affirmation of like, okay, pulling everything in, stitching that corset. Nine, so close guys. Eight, try to keep those shoulders down, collarbones open. Seven, Six. Ooh, we're gonna slow it down. I can really feel that my low back wants to come off. Five. Press it down to the floor. Four. These are your inverts right here. These leg deadlifts. Three. Two. One. Beautiful. Hands come behind the head. We are going to actually let's stretch the legs out for a second here. We're just gonna do a few bend and straighten for this next exercise, which is going to be a bicycle twist, but we are going to make it extra challenging by extending the legs. So kind of giving the legs a little bit of a stretch here, priming that flexibility. So what we're gonna do is bring the hands behind the head. It's important to keep the elbows out to the side and not let everything around in. We're going to draw one knee up, twist towards it, and drawing it towards my chest, extend. And I'm thinking of lengthening through my neck, through the crown of the head, pressing those elbows open. Switch, draw in, extend it out. I'm keeping this leg just hovering above the floor. So you got 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. And switch. Seventeen. Trying to hold that extension, feel that leg, pointing the toes. Fourteen. 
me my belly button down and even though I'm going side to side, I'm still trying to keep my spine nice and grounded. All right, 11, halfway there. Nine, work those obliques, get that twist. Eight, seven, Woo, let's go. Six, five, four, drop in, fight for it. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, there it is. Feel that good core burn. Breathe here for a moment, catch your breath. Those nice full exhales. Beautiful, all right, coming up onto our forearms here. We're gonna lift through the chest. And this is probably the hardest one because <laughs> what we wanna do is avoid collapsing here through our shoulders and through our low back and try to stay nice and lifted and lengthened and also not letting our stomach puff out here. This is one where that can happen very easily. What we're going to do is lift up the legs. Doesn't need to be very high. We're not up here. We're like this high off the floor. We're going to go out, in, down, and up. Out, in, and down. Yeah? So you don't need to lift the legs very high to feel the burn here. We're really trying to work that lower core, that deep core stability here. Pressing into the floor, lifting up through the shoulders. Let's go, we've got 15. And in, up. Looking at your belly, make sure it's drawing in, not puffing out. Third of the way there. Woo. Eight. Seven. Oh. Halfway. Six. Five. Drop in it. Four. Contract. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah, guys, come on down. Woo, really feeling it with that one. Okay, let's work a little bit of side to side leg, leg circles here. So we are going to bring one leg up the midline, slightly bring it out to the side, to the diagonal, and circle it down. So up the center, out to the diagonal, circling it down. So this is gonna help with your ability to, you know, not just do the legs up straight and down, but start to move in a bigger range of motion here. So I'm gonna start with my right leg. We've got 10 each side, so I'm gonna come up the center. Over to the side, and I'm really trying to drop up towards my armpit, circle it down. Inhale all the way up. Exhale to really make sure that I'm stabilizing on the way down. Make sure I'm not rolling off to one side. I'm trying to keep this left side really angry. My point of balance is going over the side. That's part of this challenge. All right, we've got seven. Really straight legs, pointy toes out. Six. Five. Four. Three. I'm trying to get that leg as close to my face as possible, working those hip flexors. 
two. One. Beautiful. Shake that right leg out. And let's switch sides to our left. So inhaling up. Grounding that right hip down as you circle that leg. So I'm really using my core for the stabilizing here to make sure I'm not rolling off to one side. I to relax as much as I can for my upper body. Nine. Eight. Seven, ground that hip. Six, it's like right about here where I start to feel like, oh, my other leg wants to arch, and I've got to try and press it down to the floor. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Shake out that left leg. Woo. All right, friends. We're going to do that whole circuit one more time. We'll call it good, okay? So I'm going to take a bridge pose here. Just stretch out my hip flexor, stretch out my hips a little bit. Take a breath into the belly. Take a moment to come down. I'm gonna take a little happy baby. Piping up, let's go for round two. So now that we're already a little bit more tired, you might have to be a little bit more mindful with that mind to muscle connection. You really make sure that you are not letting the belly puff out, that you're using the breath, you're keeping the back rounded, okay? Alrighty, y'all. Legs up. And if at any point you get too tired, you can always do a bent leg. Maybe you want to start there even, if that feels more accessible to get those legs closer to the ground. And then you can work up towards straight legs, okay? So, choose which one works for you. Inhale on the way down. Exhale. On the way up. No momentum, control only. Two. Four. Six. Eight. Ten. Halfway there. I'm going to bring it down to the bent leg because I can feel that my low back is having a tough time staying on the ground. So I'm going to prioritize the form. And Fourteen. Really thinking that drawing my belly button down is what initiates my legs coming up. Have it all start from your center. Right, that it is engaging the core. Oh, that draws the legs up. Pulling the low back to the floor is what helps draw them up. Eighteen. 19, 20, hands behind the head. Let's keep going from here. We got 20, and switch. 18, and switch. 16, switch. 14, and twist. 12, really feel that rotation. Switch, 
Japan. Eat! Ooh, let's go that straight legs. Six. <laughs> that are the hardest to keep that engagement. This is where it's really gonna work. Those lower core muscles that people can have a hard time switching on. So if you are riding the struggle bus with me, I'm right there with you. What really helps is again, to make sure you don't start to collapse, really press into the floor, press up, keep the heart open without flaring the ribs. So we're trying to stay lifted, but still nice and tight through the core, yeah? And if lifting both of them just feels impossible, you can lift one. That's still a good workout, <laughs> okay? But you have 15. Two. Four. Oh, my belly wants to pop out six. Eight. Oh. Guys, this one. <laughs> Ten. I'm putting my hands here so that I can get that awareness to not puff out because my stomach really wants to. Twelve. Three more. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Oh my god. That one, you just gotta do it fast and get it over with. <laughs> okay guys, our single leg side to side. Once again, we are going to start with the left side now. So, get those shoulder blades snuggled under your ribs. Take a moment to find that openness across the collarbones. It's really common to start like rounding those shoulders up. I want you to try and keep them open. Keep that length. See if you can work on really having the tension in certain parts of your body while being able to relax others, okay? So we inhale up, and I'm turning out, doing that external rotation, spiraling up through the leg, through, up through my pointed toe, out, and down. Two. Up, pulling it in. Three, draw it into your body. Ground through that right hip. I'm gonna place one hand on that right hip to really feel it. Oh, keeping it still, not letting it rock. Keep those hips still. Five, halfway there. Six. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ooh. Rock this hip side to side. Okay, last side, y'all. Right side, we're really trying to pull that leg, not just here, you know, eh, whatever. Really try and get it as close to your face as you can. Ooh, feels like a good stretch. I just want to stretch now, not work out, but let's go. Up, out, and around. Even as you're bringing it out to the side, think squeezing it as high up as you can. Three. Four. Five. Six. Squeeze it in. 
seven. Oh, you guys see my legs shaking there. <laughs> Eight. Now I'm working to squeeze it in. That active range of motion. Nine. Ten. Woo, let's roll over to our stomach. Take a little sphinx pose here. Stretching into the belly. We're gonna press up to a cobra if that feels good for you. And let's press back to a down dog. Just stretch it out for a moment. Knees drop down. Tabletop coming into a couple cat cows. here when we're on the floor really thinking about stabilizing pulling everything in using the breath if you can use those same things while you're dancing you are a lot less likely to get injured you are going to feel less back pain less hip flexor pain um, and see a lot of transformation in your core so hope you enjoy this class come back to it time and time again to keep getting stronger and we'll see you in the next class Mwah.